So, I'd like to invite you for a quick tour of my world, the microchip, the Silicon Integrated Circuit, or IC. In particular, this one which is designed for wireless applications. Wireless these days means immersiveness and uh, you know, different virtual world of numerous applications that were described in the previous years. So, we usually, in our line of work, we look into these guys, the ICs, blown up in size, so we can work on the individual features that comprise them. The millions of transistors that can coexist in a chip like this, the wires, and some interesting devices that I'm gonna talk about later, the spiral inductors. So all of us are using them in our daily life, but we can't see them because they're so tiny and they're hidden. That's actually a pity for where I'm standing because we're missing all the beauty and the art that goes into designing one of those chips. So, uh, what I have come to call a tiny wonder can be smaller than a stamp. On one side is less than five millimeters, less than half a centimeter. And on, on, from that size, it can accomplish a variety of tasks for you. Very useful tasks, as I'm sure you'll agree. It can connect your smartphone to a Bluetooth headset, so you can talk to your loved ones while driving and be safe and stay safe. The same chip takes care of all the wireless connectivity for connecting your smartphone or your computer to the nearest hotspot. So you can access your emails and you can book your next flight from your phone. It's also full-fledged FM radio, so you can listen to your favorite radio stations, your favorite music, and it offers you GPS, so you can get your bearings and uh, use maps while on the road. All this out of a tiny package. So this is, this is really wonderful. Design on a, one of those chips is what we wanted to do when we started my company, Helic, about 10 years ago. So we, got, we were lucky enough to get venture capital funding out of Greece. We got going and uh, we started developing our technology and at the same time figuring out a strategy for making money out of our dream, monetizing our dream. We ended up with a very interesting business model, design automation. Basically offering software tools so that other companies, other designers worldwide, in the Silicon Valley, in the Far East, in Japan, could design wireless chips. So are we a software or a hardware company? We're somewhere in between, because we're offering software so that hardware can be designed. It's a really nice place to be. So our software tools, they help our customers navigate the overwhelming, and I might also add, increasing complexity of modern uh, wireless chips. For instance, we have technology that helps our customers analyze this interesting device, which you can find plenty of on a wireless chip today. It's the spiral inductor. So what's different with our technology is that we're enabling the analysis and modeling of this device in seconds Whereas with traditional technology, before we came into the picture, it took hours. So with our technology, we're basically buying our designers, our end users, time so that, so that they can flex their imagination into designing the system that goes around the device. And oh boy, they have a lot of work to do. Then, we're offering something like a shrinking machine for silicon. Our software can take a design like the one on the left and transforming to something that which looks like the one on the right. It might not look like much, but uh, in the economies of scale of silicon, this is really significant. This means that your next smartphone can be smaller, thinner, lighter, and cheaper. I'm gonna talk about tradition just for a while, because we had none when we started. Uh, there was, I mean, none, of us, none, none of us had done it before for sure, and there was no company like us in our vicinity, in our neighborhood, when we started. So we had to balance the lack of tradition by innovation. Uh, among other things, we're facing formidable competition in what we do, especially from companies that are more conveniently located in the Silicon Valley, for instance, where the, the bulk of our clientele is located. So to stay competitive, we have to do things really, really differently than the other guy. 
So for us, innovation is not just an objective, as with every other high-tech company. It's a mode of survival. When looking for a logo for one of our products, we came up with this, which, at least to our eyes, it blends the really old with the really new. So the meander pattern on the left is reminiscent of our Greek origin. And the pattern on the right is illustrating the devices we help make possible on silicon. We're a company of <coughs> many disciplines. To get going, we have to work with experts in electromagnetics, semiconductors, obviously, circuit designers, software engineers, mathematicians, and video games experts. So we even had to go out and recruit computer graphics experts that were designing video games in their previous job and tap their expertise into solving problems for silicon. Because there's a lot of polygon pushing, shape manipulation in designing um, integrated circuits as there is in designing video games. What's most interesting is that we're using exclusively local talent. By local, I mean Greece. Uh, so we recruit people from, that are graduating from Greek universities, and in some cases we go to neighboring countries. So uh, I have to say that the local universities do produce excellent talent. So for us, it's just a matter of giving them the objective and the motivation to go out and solve tough problems for the chip design community. So uh, I have to cross an ocean and a continent to get to my best customer, which means we're really far far away. However, technology and the common need to solve problems for getting those wireless tiny wonders uh, going brings us close. Uh, for either myself or one of my colleagues, uh, travel is quite significant. Um, this is my travel statistics for the past year or so. It's like 11 days sitting on the plane per year. Or for those of you who are astronomically inclined, it's like going to the moon every two years or so. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of travel involved, but the job is rewarding. We really, really love our job. Thank you. Thank you.